Hello and what is going on everyone, it's Duoscape here and I hope you're all doing well. As promised, I'm going to show you guys the daily run that I opt to do on my account in my From Scratch series. And basically, it's just going to show you guys the nice, quick, convenient and easy dailies I like to do. And I'll give you all of the reasons why. I'll show you how much money you can make. I don't do every single daily in the game. Simply due to the fact that at certain points of your game, depending on how much money you can make, some things are more efficient than others. For argument's sake, it's not really time effective for me to run and do a feather shop run when I can go make 20 to 30 mil elsewhere. And this will be the same for your guys' accounts. If you like just collecting things and making easy money, there's tons of great guides out there that will show you how to make easy money doing daily runs in RuneScape, showing you everything you need to know, everything that you can do and whatnot. And this is simply a video of me showing you the run that I do in my From Scratch series, explaining everything along the way, so that any of you guys that are following me on the series can do this with me. If you guys do not want to spend 20 to 30 minutes watching all of this, there's no problem with that whatsoever. I will leave in the description down below timestamp so that you can skip to whatever part of the video that you guys want to. Currently only 22% of you guys are subscribed to the channel. Thank you to all of you out there. You are truly amazing and I cannot thank you guys for the support enough. But for you 78% out there that aren't subscribed yet, if you find that you keep on watching my videos, they keep popping up and you're enjoying the content, please jump along for the ride. I'd love to have you guys. So the first thing I do when I log onto my account, I go straight to the bank and I grab out a captain's log. For those of you unaware, this is basically for your player own ports. You can remotely access this from anywhere in the game. And all I do is I read it, I select my first ship and I collect whatever I had. So unfortunately we wasn't able to get Ancient Bones from that one, but it's not the end of the world. Finish your repair, get the results again, and we're just going to see if we've got any other voyages that we want to send out. So I check the special ones first, and as you can see there's no Ancient Bone voyages, so we're not actually going to send out any for the special voyages. Next up what I like to do is I'll go to the standard ones and just re-roll everything. There we go, first go, we've got Ancient Bones. Then all you need to do is edit your ship and crew to get the highest percent possible. As you can see, the previous one that I sent out was seafaring and combat, whereas now we need seafaring and morale. So all I'm going to do is swap my morale ones for these combat ones, and this should bring me up to near 70%. So 68%, I'm not going to bother trying out to get even more. You probably can get more than that, but this is personally what I set one to make it as quick and convenient as possible. So I send that out and hopefully that should come back and make us a fair bit of money giving us a vampirism scrimshaw that we can use for the series. So next up I go to the bank and I grab myself my bladed dive switch. You want to make sure that this has mobile on for mobility and we're now going to do a rune shop run. You also want to make sure you have your wicked hood while doing this as well because you're going to need that to make your viswax later on. And if you have 99 rune crafting make sure you have your rune crafting cape because this will allow you to see what the third rune is for your viswax combo. So first things first, I use the Wilderness Sword to teleport to Edgeville. If you don't have the Wilderness Sword, just use the Lodestone and teleport to the Edgeville Lodestone. From here, you want to run northeast and go over the Wilderness Ditch. And yes, you are going to be in the Wilderness. That's why we do this one first. You do not want to lose anything while out here. If anyone does try to PK you, use your freedom and anticipate and hopefully try to get away from them. You can also quickly teleport if you see anyone. Then you want to trade the Mage of Samurak. And personally, I buy all of the elemental runes. These ain't all going to be a profit. As you can see, they all buy for 17 each. So if you want to see what you're going to make profit for, simply price check all of them. And anything that's below 17, do not buy. If it's on 17, I'd still recommend purchasing it. Purely due to the fact that you're going to need to use them potentially for your Viswax combo. So from that right there, you're mainly going to be making your profit on the fire and air runes. So if that's all you wanted to prioritize, they're the two runes I'd recommend buying. Next up, you can check through the other runes here. As you can see, you can buy Blood Runes for 550 and you can buy Chaos Runes for 140. Let's see if they make a profit at the moment. So the Blood Runes are just a slight profit, so we're still going to buy them. And the Chaos Runes are actually a 8 GP profit per one. Because we're here, we're going to buy them anyways. Next up, we're going to be going to the Deep Wilderness Shop, which is in the Mage Training Arena. If you don't have the Wilderness Sword 4, you're going to have to run to Edgeville and you're going to have to use the Wilderness Lever that's just south of the bank. We do have the Wilderness Sword, so for simplicity's sake, in the series, all I do is I teleport using the Wilderness Sword to the Agility Course deep in the Wilderness. Same again, you are in the Wilderness, so if you did really care about getting PK'd, bank your runes, don't bring anything that you're not willing to lose. And then as soon as we're here, I normally do one bladed dive just over to the northeast. And you want to get yourself into the Mage Training Arena, the place where you get your Guffic Staff. If you haven't got a Guffic Staff yet, I'd recommend grabbing one. 
They offer the best special attack weapon for magic. So if you don't have a Guthix staff, I'd recommend doing that mini game. So as soon as you get here, you want to slash through both of these webs. I'm pretty confident that you don't actually need to have a sword or a knife on you to do this. So you should be able to just cut it without anything in your invent. So you, when you're here, you want to trade Lundau. And it's the same principle. Buy the same exact runes that you bought before for a profit. And this shop does actually have additional runes that you're going to want to check the profit on. Nature runes, I'm pretty sure, are a loss at the moment. But if you want to check, just do what I do. Buy one of each. So 372 for the natures, 232 for the cosmics. So the cosmic runes are a decent amount of profit. But the nature runes, you're going to lose a fair bit on. So do not buy the nature runes at this current point in time. As I said, buy them individually to see which ones make profit and which ones lose you money. This way you can never go wrong. Also, while I'm here, I like to buy two lore runes. And the reason that we do this is so that we can use the Watchtower Teleport. And this will teleport us straight to the next place that we need to go for our run. If you don't have access to this teleport, you need to do the Watchtower Quest and part of the Yardi Diaries. But if you don't have access to this, you're going to just have to use the Yanil Lodestone instead. While we're here, this isn't going to make you the most profit. But I trade the pet shop owner and I buy the flies off of him. He will sell you 200 flies at 10 each. So you're going to be spending 2k on these. And then they will slow sell in the Grand Exchange. For 62,000. So in my opinion it's worth doing. If you're growing frogs at your player owned farm. You can use them there as well. And then as soon as you've done that. You want to go east into the magic guild. And once you're here. Trade the owner. You can easily see who he is. Because he's the only one over here on this left side. Without a cape. And once you trade him. Exactly the same as before. Buy your runes that you want to sell on for profit later on. The big change here. This guy also sells blood runes. Which at the moment ain't the biggest profit. But it's still a profit. So we're going to buy them. He also sells soul runes. And this is where you're going to make a chunk of your profit. So take a look at this. 100 of these buy for 41k. And you can actually resell these on the Grand Exchange for 280k. So you're going to want to make sure you have this unlocked. Next up, if you've done the Lunar Diplomacy quest, you'll be able to teleport to Lunar Isle. If you haven't, I'd recommend doing it just for these daily runs. Daily runs really are a great way for you to get some sustainable money on your account. Every single day, log in, spend 5 to 10 minutes doing your run. And you can really make... A fair amount of profit in such a short time and it does actually pay for all of your membership if you pay for bonds in game same principle as before by all of the same runes this guy also sells soul runes so you're going to make a nice load of profit on him again the only additional rune that this guy sells is astral runes which if we take a look he sells them for 220 and we can sell them for 400 so you're going to want to make sure you grab these and now we're on to our last rune shop run so you want to teleport yourself to port sarim once you're at Port Sarim, you want to go east and you want to go to the squire that's on the dock, the second to last dock, and you want to travel with him. Before doing this, if this is your first time, you'll realize you have a cutscene when you're on the boat. If you go to settings, the first option, game interaction under interfaces, you can scroll down and tick this box and it will always skip boat cutscenes. So you're going to want to travel here and this is going to take you to the void outpost. I'm sure many of you guys from old school will be aware of this because this is where you get your void on old school. It's not really too relevant on RS3, but eh, maybe they'll bring back Voidscape. Once you're here, trade this squire to the southwest and he only sells the basic runes once again. So we're going to purchase all of these. So next up on the list, we actually want to teleport to the runecrafting guild. We've done our rune shop run. So before we proceed into here, I'm just going to show you guys how much money we've already made on this run. So all of what we've got in our inventory cost us 950k to purchase, which when we put in here, it resells for 2.2 mil. So already we've made 1.2 mil doing this run. I'm now going to show you how much you can add on to this run using Vizwax. So Vizwax is arguably the most cost efficient daily that you can possibly do on your account. It will literally take 30 seconds to one minute to do, depending on how well you know the system itself. And you will need 50 rune crafting in order to get into here. If you don't have 50 rune crafting, I'd heavily recommend looking up a rune span guide and getting yourself 50 rune crafting as soon as possible because this is going to be one of the easiest ways you make profit on your account, especially in the beginning. So I'm not going to bore you guys and explain in depth how to do your Vizwax combo. There are a ton of resources out there that can help you find the combo for the day it changes daily i'm going to just put them on screen now and the first and most simple method to do this is to join the vizwax fc once you're in here every single day there will be an updated vizwax combo for you guys to follow 
I'm not going to go in depth and tell you how to do this because there's plenty of guides out there and a lot of you are fully aware of how to do it anyway. Another great way to get the Vizwax combo is to use the link that I've put down in the description down below. This Rune Goldberg Tracker website will show you every single day what the combo is and the third and final way that I'd recommend doing your Vizwax combo is by using the Vizwax combo plugin for Alt1 Toolkit. The Vizwax combo plugin is not pre-installed with Alt1 Toolkit and you will need to click on the link in the description down below and it will prompt you on how to install this onto your Alt1. Basically, this will show you a nice visual graphic in-game every single time you go to do your Vizwax combo. But there we go. This is our combo for today and it's going to make us 96 Vizwax. Before making this, we had a price check of 2.2 mil and then after making this, it's going to bring us all the way up to 3.1, nearly 3.2 mil. So we're already up 2 mil from today. And considering we've only spent 950k, to already make this much profit is pretty nice. So next up on the agenda is actually to obtain broad arrowheads and a few vials of water packs. First up, all I do is teleport to Burfop. If you have the 99 Slayer Cape, you can teleport to every Slayer Master in the game and you can do this a little bit quicker. But due to the fact that not everyone's 99 Slayer, I'm just gonna show you how to do it without it. So you go to the Lodestone at Burfop, come over here and trade this guy and you wanna buy 3,000 broad arrowheads. These buy for 50 coins each at the moment, and if we take a look at the price checker, they sell for 61. So that's 33k profit in a matter of seconds, and it adds up over time. While you're here, if you still need your invention components, a great way to get in some invention components is by disassembling rings of Slayer, which can be made using Slayer gems. So if you do want to do that on your account, you may as well, while you're here, buy the enchanted gem packs. And once you open all of this, this will allow you to make 250 gems. After this, I personally teleport to Tavali. The reason that we're going to Tavali is to buy some vials of water and some bomb vials. All you wanna do is run south of the lodestone and go across this bridge. And once you're across here, you wanna go northeast to this guy on the stall right here named Yatix. And when you trade Yatix, he will sell you vial of water packs and bomb vials. The vial of water packs reset in a weird way compared to most other dailies. And I'm pretty sure it's either three or five days it will reset to the full 40. But just for now, we've just spent 16k on 33 of them, and we're able to resell this for 105k. So this is a great daily to do as well. And while you're here, also buy the bomb vials. These will cost you 500, and because they're used for the best herbal or training method in game and making bomb bombs, they actually sell them for a killing. So from that 500, we've just made like 150k. And whilst we're on this topic of buying vials of water and bomb vials, the only other one that I actually do is in Priftinus. Once you're here, you want to just travel straight north into the Melia district. Personally, when I do this, I have a attuned crystal teleport seed. So I will teleport straight to the Maya district and run all the way here. But I'm assuming some of you guys will not have this. So teleporting straight to the Prith Lodestone will suffice. And once you're here, you want to go to the northeast of the district. And once you trade her, she will sell the bomb vials and the bar of water packs once again for a nice easy bit of profit. Next up on the list, you want to teleport to Edgeville again. And what we're going to be doing now is buying the remaining arrowheads and a few other items that will make you a nice chunk of profit. So you're going to want to travel south all the way down to this lever and you want to trade Vanica. This is the second Slayer Master you're going to be buying your broad arrowheads and enchanted gems off if you have the desire to collect them. So you're just simply going to buy these and now I'd recommend going to the bank and banking everything except from your bladed dive switch. Once you've done this you want to head northwest and you want to talk to Mr X. Once you talk to Mr. X, he will be able to scull you on demand. The first time you do this, he's going to give you a massive prompt and you can ask him not to talk as much every other time. So you'll just go, yes, scull me, and then that's it. You have been sculled. The reason that you need to be sculled is because when we're going to go all the way northwest into the wilderness to this bandit camp, if you enter this camp unsculled, you will get killed by a ton of NPCs in there. And the reason that we want to go here, personally, what I do is I buy the vial of water packs once again. I buy the broad arrowheads and I also purchase the bloodwood seeds. The bloodwood seeds that you buy can be used to do herb runs on your account or you can just sell them for a real nice, quick, easy bit of profit. And I'll show you that when we get there. So once you've gone across the ditch, you go north past the Chaos Altar and just up here where you can see this island surrounded by lava, you're going to want to run straight into here into the northwest of it. Surging and bladed diving works very different in the wilderness to anywhere else in the game. You can only use one of them every 10 or 20 seconds, depending if you have the mobile perk, so be wary of that. Once you're here, you want to trade this guy here called Notarazzo. Probably butchering that, but who cares? And you want to buy five Bloodwood Seeds, which cost you 250k. And at current prices, you're going to make 110k in doing so. 
He also sells a ton of other items at a 10% discount. And these items can occasionally sell for a profit. I'm going to be honest with you. They have a slow buy and sell time. So I personally avoid these. But if you ever need to make your Serenic Armor, Tectonic, Elite Serenic, Elite Tectonic, you can come here and buy some of the threads. I also buy the Vile Water Packs for some easy profit and I'll buy the Broad Arrowheads as well. Once you've done this, you just want to head south because you're not able to teleport above 20 Wilderness. And when you get just south of this tree, you should be able to teleport to anywhere in the game. I personally just use the Wars Retreat teleport. So the next part of this run is actually where I use a preset. And this is the preset that I use. And this is basically where you're going to do your sandstone run. On your pickaxe, I'd recommend having refined four and honed six. These are all going to increase the chances that you have at obtaining sandstone. Honed makes it so that when you're mining, there is a 2% chance per rank for additional ores. And refined actually makes it so that there's a 5% chance of preventing the resource from being depleted when gathering. This also works on the sandstone. That's why you want to have it. So first up on this, I use a Sophenum Slayer Dungeon Teleport. As soon as you've teleported here, you can buy the 1,000 Feathers of Mutt off of the Menophyte Guard. You paid 1.5 mil for these and you can resell these for nearly 1.8. So that's an easy 300k profit and you're going to be here anyways. For those of you unaware, the Sophenum Slayer Teleports you could buy on the Grand Exchange. If not, if you're an Iron Man, you can make them yourself. Or you could just use the Menophos Lodestone and just run across the bridge. And once you're here, you're going to want to go through this door. And there is the sandstone that you're wanting to mine. In order to mine this, you do need to do the Elite Desert Diaries. You can only get an additional 25 a day. With all of the boost, it ends up being like somewhere near 29, 30. But yeah, if you, if you want to unlock this, that is what you need to do. And this is what I personally do in my run. When you're doing these, you can use the Resourceful Aura. And this will give you a 10% chance to get double sandstone. So it's well worth using. If you don't have it, I'd recommend getting it after some of your more important auras. But it's definitely worth grabbing. You can bank manually if you wanted to but i personally opt to bring signs of the porters i didn't used to do this but since they've added the ones that have 50 charges i don't mind actually spending the money to do it okay so now that this is done in order to save money on charges i just teleport to a bank and i deposit all of the red sandstone and the feathers that we obtained next up i use the attuned crystal teleport seed to teleport to the malware district if you don't have this you can use a regular teleport seed or you can do the route that i showed you earlier you're going to want to go south into this mysterious entrance. And yes, this is another steep requirement. To get an extra 25 crystal flasks every single day, you need to have 115 dungeoneering. Once you're in here, you want to reach inside the Marvel Lobe more. This gives you items every single day. And there's a large list of rewards that you can obtain from this. But in short, basically the rewards are completionist based. And you're going to get something that will help you progress towards completionist. You can also get some cool items like a dragon pickaxe that you can sell instantly. But yeah, that's the general consensus of that. And then just to the east, you're going to have a crystal flex sandstone that's going to yield another 25 crystal flex sandstone for you to collect. Just remember, if you don't have this one unlocked or the one in the desert, you are going to be losing out on 50% of the profit from this run in terms of the sandstone. But if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. Just do the ones that you... So next up on the list of things to do, we're going to get the more mainstream sandstone locations so once again we're going to teleport to the bank and dump off some of these additional items that we don't need to free up some space and we're going to teleport to the Ooglug lodestone which is all the way in the southwest of the map when you're here you're going to want to travel northeast and you're going to want to go to this red sandstone here if you aren't opting to use signs of the porter what you can do is you can head through this shortcut here and go to the bank and whilst you go through there to the bank you may as well convert this sandstone from this rock you're going to get yourself an extra 50 red sandstone which to be honest with you if you take a look at the price of potion flasks at the moment i think they're like 13k back in the day these did drop all the way down to 5k and i did personally avoid doing them because they're just not worth your time but because the sandstone takes so long it isn't the most cost effective way to make money but in fairness if you're like me and you find yourself logging in and just sitting there doing nothing you may as well do it because it's better than doing nothing. On the side note of this as well, you actually need to obtain a lot of red sandstone and crystal sandstone in order to get a lot of the skilling off hands and the blessed flask. So I'm personally getting ahead of myself there because in the series, them items that I'd previously have never have gone for before, I would like to obtain. So after you finish mining this red sandstone, you're going to use your crystal teleport seed and teleport to the Ifil district of Cryptonus. Once again, if you don't have this, just teleport to the lodestone. 
Whilst you're here, use the bank and get rid of all of your red sandstone. And you're going to want to mine the 50 crystal sandstone from here. Now, if you are on a normal account, because you're going to be running back and forth whilst doing your invents, you may as well convert these as you get them into the robust glass. As I'm trying to keep things separate from my series and the stuff I already had in my bank account, I do not do this. So if you take a look at my bank, I already have 1500 robust glass and 1000 crystal glass. This is separate to my series. So as I explained, I just keep in the bank the raw form of the sandstone. And when it comes to it, I will manually go over to the robust glass machine, burn it and blow them into the flasks there and then. I know that makes it more confusing, but I just want to clear it up. That's why I'm not personally converting them as we go. And there we go. That's all of the sandstone mine. And in terms of the profit that you're going to make at a minimum every single day doing this, from the 75 minimum red sandstone that you're going to achieve, you're going to make one mil. Anywhere between 85 and 90 every single day. So you're going to get probably 1.3 mil just from them alone. And then when we take a look at the crystal flasks, you're going to be making a little bit less because they only sell for 5.2k. But if you get the base amount of 75, you're going to be making about 400k. As I said, this is not the most time effective daily to do on your account. You do need them to make some of the untradeable items in the game. And that's why I'm focusing on them. And also, if you're just starting from scratch or starting over and you have no money on the account, it will be time effective for you to actually do this. Hence why I'll put so much focus on it at the start of our series. So next up on the list, what you want to do, you're going to want to do your divine locations. So if you're going for 99 and you're trying to max, I'd recommend doing divine new trees in world two at birth up or at the Lumbridge training academy or whatever it's called. But if you're doing it for money, you're going to want to make sure you have the desert pantheon aura. I'm pretty sure you can buy it in game with bonds or obtain it somehow, or you might already have it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Just know that this allows you to get double the amount of profit each day from your divine locations. So you want to use the bounty of Crondis on this desert pantheon aura, and it will extend it by 100%. And then next up, we're going to teleport to the Melia district once again. And I'm pretty sure there's another steep requirement of dungeoneering to do this. I think you need... I want to say 95, 99, somewhere in the ballpark of that to enter here. It's been so long since I've done Dungeoneering, but when you're in here, you can see that Divine Bubbles start spawning. So if you want to make the most amount of profit that you can make every single day, Divine Herb Patch 1s are going to give you the most profit. This is purely due to the fact you can get Toad Flax and Spirit Weeds from them, and you can get a lot of them because they take up so little charges each day. The issue is it takes a very long time, A, finding them, and B, gathering from them. So I tend to avoid them because I value my time. If you were going for pure profit, that is what you would do. Next, you want to prioritize Herb Patch Freeze and Divine Rock Tail Bubbles. You can set on Divine Shark Bubbles, but you're going to make slightly less. So every single day with the base amount of Divine Locations you can harvest from, from doing the Divine Herb Patch 1s, you can make 830k. This is doubled if you're using the Desert Pantheon Aura that I showed. So you can make 1.6 mil every day doing the Vine Her Patch 1. If you were to set on the Vine Rock Tail Bubbles, you're going to make 282k. The Vine Shark Bubbles, you're going to make 266k. And the Her Patch Freeze over 91 farming, you're going to make 263k. So once again, if you really need the money and you want to invest your time into doing this and hopping about, take your time and find the Divine Her Patch 1s. You're going to make your most amount of profit every single day. If you're an Iron Man account or you play in an Iron Man way, her patch ones are ridiculously good for you because you get spirit weeds, which are otherwise hard to come by. So all you want to do when you're here is just hop through the worlds and find one that you want to settle on. As I said, I personally settle on Divine Rock Tail Bubbles or Divine Her Patches. So there we go. We have a Divine Her Patch 3. I'll settle on this. And today I will make, with the doubled amount, 520k from gathering from this. And that's pretty much it for the dailies that I choose to do on my account. There are so many dailies out there that you can do. Like just to name a few that I haven't touched on this episode. There are a lot more rune shops that you can unlock or acquire and buy runes from to make even more profit. I just do the ones that I find le the least time consuming for me personally. On another note, you can use your wicked hood to make some free nature runes or blood runes every single day. Once again, if you want to do that and you want to make the money and invest your time into it, please do so. There are more vile shops in the game if you'd like to locate them. You can do feather shop runs. There's loads of things out there and there's tons of great daily money making guides on YouTube. There are a load of other ones that I haven't mentioned in this video that are just as important as the ones that I've shown here. Doing your daily herb runs. I say daily. You can do them every 80 minutes, but 
As a good rule of thumb, if you do a herb run every time you log in, you're going to make a nice bit of profit. For criminal bolt runs, you make a ton of profit doing them as well. But because they're not dailies, I'm not going to include them. They ain't the things I do every day. And what I'm showing you here are the things that I do on my account every single day. And then you have a lot of passive money makers that you can actually do in game. So you have your manager miscellanea, which after doing the Royal Trouble quest, you can manage your kingdom and make a few hundred K every single day passively. That's another great alternative that you could be doing on your account. And as a daily, all you would do, you would go there once a day and you would chop down one tree and that would be it and that would sustain it. Another great one that you can do is your alchemizer machines that you would check pretty much every week. You put 5,000 items in there that you want to auto alk and you will make roughly 800 GP to 1.2k profit per alk. It adds up to a ton over time. And then last but not least, the only other daily that I'd recommend doing on your account is your mana farm. So... I've been keeping this separate on the series purely due to the fact that my player owned farm hasn't been unlocked from scratch. But just to show you guys how much money you can really make from doing this, I haven't checked this in a week or two. I'm going to click collect and I haven't done anything and I've just made 4.2 mil. I never need to feed these because they're joyful immune. This means they don't need food, they never die, they will always reproduce. And it's easy money. If you were to want to level up your farming or sell animals to other players for beans you can do the same thing in the other pens and you can resell these onto other players for anywhere between 300 and 400 k each and that will make you literally like an extra one meal a day the same can be done for the dragons you can breed dragons and resell them as adolescent to other players who will pay a lot of money to get these. the other recurring daily that i do which i've also kept separate from the series just because once again i haven't put the money in from scratch to obtain these is the ranch out of time farm it's a very lucrative way to sustain your membership make money and overall just get towards account upgrades the way that you end up doing this is basically you want to grow your best dinosaurs in the south pen and they will breed continuously giving you eggs as soon as the eggs come you want to put them into your other large pens and these will breed. And then once they get to Elder, you can actually gather produce from them, which if you take a look here, we've just obtained 130 bottle dinosaur roars. That's 880k. All I've done is buy a breeding pair literally like a year ago, however long ago it was. And now it just prints money out. So look, just from here, I haven't been here in ages. These, this is what I've made from my ranch out of time. I'm just going to run through all of these now and gather these. What you would do when they get to the elder stage is you would actually take them out and you would go over here and sell them for beans. Other players don't really want the elder dinosaurs. As you can see, we've gained 780 bottled dinosaur rods. The same can be done for your medium dinosaur pen with the venomous dinosaurs, I think they're called. And these will make you a lot less profit, but they will yield you dinosaur claws, which they still sell for a decent chunk. So from my player owned farm, if I was to keep on top of it, it would actually make a lot of money every single day. Just from coming here, I've just made 10 mil like that. This is completely lossless. I don't really have to do anything. You, you have to feed them and that will cost a bit of money, but it doesn't compare to any amount of money that you would make. But yeah, that's all of the dailies I do on my account from scratch. Like I said, I do not do my farming dailies because this is not part of the From Scratch series yet. When I eventually invest in the breeding pairs and animals, I will allow myself to do this, which I should probably do soon. So there we go. That's all of the dailies that I personally do in RuneScape. At the end of the day, it's a game. And if you start making up all of these chores that you force yourself to do every day, you're not going to play it for very long. How many of you guys know someone that's fed up with dailyscape? Do not force yourself to do these things and just do them when you can be bothered. Like at the end of the day, you will burn out if you do them too much. And it's all about longevity when playing a game as grindy as RuneScape. So do what you want to do at the time. And if you fancy doing the daily run one day, go and do it. Hopefully this lets you guys follow along with me in my journey on the dailies that I do so that you guys can progress your accounts at the same time as me. These are all of the things that I opt to make. Like I said, I don't want to make a video with every single daily in the game. There's plenty of them out there on YouTube. I just wanted to give you guys a video showing you my dailies that I do on my account. Hopefully you found it useful. And if you did, feel free to drop a like on the video. In the following weeks, I'm going to carry on working on our From Scratch series. And I'm also going to start working on some guides. I know I've not been making too many guides lately. I've just been having so much fun playing my account again. So I'm going to try to get a few guides out for you in the following weeks. If that's something that sounds interesting to you guys and you want to jump along for the journey, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you guys along. As I said, this is not the perfect way to do your dailies. So if you've got any dailies that you think I've missed that I should be including, 
Comment it down below so that other players can read your response and see what they should be adding to their daily run. As always, and I know I say it all the time, thank you guys for watching the video. And hopefully you guys are having fun playing.